Hello, my name is Erica, and this is my 2022 year in review. Almost everything I knit <laughs> or crocheted in 2022. I know it's a little late, but I have had a stressful few weeks and not a lot of new content to share. Um, so I thought maybe it would be a good time to pull out everything I made last year take a look at it, remind myself of all I've done, and then, you know, share that with you. Maybe you'll get some ideas for, you know, what you want to work on in this coming year. Maybe you'll, you know, get some inspiration to pull out everything you've worked on and reflect on everything you have accomplished. I don't know. Take it how you will, but I hope you enjoy. Um, if you are returning to this channel, thank you so much. I am so happy to have you here. If you are new, welcome. I really hope you enjoy this video. Like and subscribe if you do. Leave me a comment if you're, you know, doing anything like this. Um, I'd love to hear about it. Or if you have any questions on anything I show, um, I'm gonna put the pattern links in the description below. But if you do have any questions, I'm not gonna put like every single um, like yarn or colorway I use, so feel free to put that down there in the comments if there's anything you're curious about. But anyway, sit down, get comfy. I'm gonna try to keep this quick. <laughs> um, I think it's good to have a balance of, you know, longer videos in your subscription list and some shorter ones too, so I'll try to provide some quick entertainment. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. I'm going to be relying heavily on my notebook today, so if I'm looking down, that's what's happening. Um, so we are going to go approximately, well, I'll take you through the categories, we'll get the totals, we'll go through the stuff approximately in the order I made it. Um, I didn't start using Ravelry, really, until the middle of the year, so I'm not 100% sure if I missed anything or not, so we're going to take everything I say with a grain of salt today. Anyways, let's see. So my totals for the year. I knit seven pairs of socks, two hats, two shawls, five tops, and I'm saying that that's sort of anything that's like not a long sleeve full sweater. Um, four sweaters, so that's, you know, long sleeve, full length, etc. Um, and four dishcloths, and that comes out to a total of 24. I'm also remembering that I knit a little, not knit, I crocheted a little amigurumi cactus planter, so let's say 25. <laughs> um, so I'm pretty impressed with that. This was really my first year fully driving, driving, <laughs> diving into knitting. Um, previous years, you know, I did a lot of crochet blankets or my first year knitting, I like really pretty much did socks. Um, but this was my first year taking on a lot of new projects. So it's kind of exciting to see all those totals and see they did a lot of different things and learned a lot of new techniques. That's pretty cool. So anyway, let's start from the beginning. <laughs> Actually, let's start with socks because I'm not going to go through each pair with you. I'm just going to hold up the pile. I'll give you some details. I made two pairs for my boyfriend, Ben. You can kind of see one of each. <laughs> These are big. They take a long time. So he got two pairs this year, I think. Part of me is like, I might have made more, but I just don't remember what was 2021 and what was 2022. So. Here we are, I'll do better next year. So then the remaining four, five, I can add up to seven, <laughs> the remaining five uh, were for me. So three of these five, we've got this one, oops, this one, this one, and these ones. These were all just plain vanilla socks. I generally use um, the vanilla socks on Magic Loop 
uh, pattern, pattern technique, etc. by the Crazy Sock Lady. I love her video tutorials. I think she's amazing. Um, so highly recommend if you're interested in getting into socks. And then the only two pairs of socks that I did that were not plain vanilla socks, well, kind of, were these, which are vanilla socks, but they are the only pair of shorties I've made, and they are the only pair that has a contrasting heel and toe. So that's something sort of interesting about those. And then these ones are basically vanilla socks, except that instead of being just stuck in it, I did a um, three by one rib. Don't these just look like Easter candy? <laughs> I love these socks. Um, but yeah, I did a three by one rib. I did plain on the bottom so it wouldn't like irritate my feet with the ribbing. And then the top is my usual, or the cuff is my usual two by two rib. So yeah, those are the socks. We won't really go through them each individually, but again, if you have questions on colorways or yarn or anything about them, put that in the comments below. Now we will go approximately in order for the other items. So to start off the year, and I technically did start this at the end of the year 2021, but I didn't finish it for like months. And this is my flax sweater. This is the very first knit sweater that I made. Um, and I love it. <laughs> there are a few things I would change about it. So this is flax by Tin Can Knits. This is like a great sweater pattern for your first sweater. They have amazing instructions, really well um, written pattern. Um, I didn't swatch for this. So that was my first. I don't want to say mistake because I actually wear this a lot, <laughs> but I didn't swatch for this. I'm lucky it came out fine. Um, it is a little bit on the short side. I wish it was just a little bit longer so that when I sit down, it doesn't like show over, show skin over the top of my pants. Um, I feel like I am kind of pulling it down a lot when I wear it. Maybe I should try to block it out a little longer. Um, I also do wish I had a little bit of shaping and I will say the pattern gives an option for shaping, but since it was my first sweater, I chose to not do that option and I still wear it a lot and I actually recently got a compliment on the neckline. So, you know, that's kind of nice. <laughs> um, I didn't do any decreases on the sleeves and so it has like a slight little bubble sleeve. Um, I wear this pretty frequently and it's really held up well. I used Knit Picks Wool of the Andes. Um, trying to remember the color. I think I want to say it was Garnet Heather, which is nice because that's my birthstone. <laughs> Not that that really matters, but Garnet's my birthstone. Born in January. Um, so yes, I love this sweater. What a great experience for my very first sweater. Um, so then I did complete a muscle burrow hat and oh my gosh, it is covered in my hair. A muscle burrow hat. And I guess I was feeling a color theme. Um, this is my hat and you know, I've got to say, <laughs> I wish I'd made it longer. I don't know why I stopped so short because it has this dinky little brim and it like barely covers my ears and then it makes me kind of look like I've got this funny round head. So not my best work on this one. Um, but I use, this is Muscle Burrow by um, Isolde Teague. It's a great pattern. You can use a ton of different gauges for this hat. So um, really flexible, highly recommend this pattern. And I actually made a second Muscle Burrow really recently that I finished um, right before Christmas 2022 and I gave it to Ben and I made that one nice and long and he's been wearing it like every day. So I don't have it here because he's wearing it and every time he puts it on, he goes, man, I love this hat. And I just like, my heart melts. I'm just so happy. So <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, this one was in Knit Picks Stroll hand painted. I think it was the color Sangria. And then the one I made for Ben was in Knit Picks Hawthorne. Um, I think they're Kettle Dye variety in the color Conifer. So. Those are my two hats for the year. Um, one at the beginning, one at the end, rounding it out. <laughs> so after that, I did make a top. This is the Roll Neck Tank by Hannah Singleton. And you know, I don't know how I feel about this. 
I have to say I was really proud with myself proud of myself for the shoulder seams that was the first time I had done that um but and the roll neck part is great but the roll everything else is not doing it for me like the sleeve opening or the armhole it just rolls so much it's like bulky and it might be my yarn choice too I did choose just something I had in stash um it was Lion Brand Flicka in the color Sidewalk. I really like the color actually. I like what the, the yarn is doing, sort of the effect. But I think it's gotta be some like cotton acrylic mix. But it just, it's just not flattering on me. <laughs> the bottom rolls, even though it's got this nice detail, you just can't see it because it just rolls up. Just a little too much rolling for me. So I never wear it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever worn it, but it was fun to make and it did go through some stash, so that's nice. Next, let's see. Oh, next was my Aosta sweater. This is a pattern by The Knit Pearl Girl. I think this is another really good sort of beginner friendly sweater pattern. Oh, it's so soft, it's so cozy, it's so like lightweight and drapey and fluffy and I love it. I love this sweater. <laughs> I think that her pattern also, I will say, this one I didn't have any shaping on, um, like neck shape, neck shaping, you know, short rows or anything, but I think that she has updated the pattern to include that. I'm not 100%, but it's this beautiful sweater. It's nice and loose, and it um, is done with Andalusian stitch, so it's got this nice texture. I made it with Drops Air in the color sea glass sea green let me double check sea green which is funny because i think this is a lot more blue than green but whatever you want to name it <laughs> um it's a little wrinkled a lot of my a lot of the things i'm gonna hold up are wrinkled because i did not like freshen them up before this video <laughs> um yeah, so I think I made the size small. I love this. I do wear this to work and I wear it pretty frequently. Um, my one complaint is not about the pattern. It's about the yarn and it's just that it gets very staticky and then it will like cling to my back. So even though it's loose, it'll like stick to me in weird ways sometimes. Granted, I live in Minnesota, so I'm wearing these big coats all the time and it's probably a me problem, but just something I've noticed. <laughs> All right, so then after my Aosta, I made dun -dun, the Anchors Summer Shirt. I think my neighbors are home. And I'm just gonna not talk to myself for a moment. while they're in our like shared entrance. Okay, I don't think they're right there anymore. I don't know why I get so self-conscious about that, but I do. Nope, they're definitely still right there. Maybe they're just directly above me. Whatever, anyway. This is my Anchors Summer Shirt. It is quite wrinkled. Um, this is a pattern by Petite Knit. It's a beautiful circular yoke pattern. It's got that detail on the top and then it's just plain. Um, this, I made a Knit Picks Kotlin. You will sense a Knit Picks theme and that is because that is what is in my budget and I am trying to go for more natural fibers. And so the other budget options are like big box store and there just isn't a lot of like 100% wool or natural fibers. There's a lot more acrylic blends. And those just make me sweat too much, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> so anyway, anchors, summer shirt, just a nice t-shirt. I will say this yarn gets quite wrinkly and I haven't really worn it, but it is long enough to wear to work. So hopefully this spring, I just remember to pull it out more cause I think I could get use out of it. I just haven't. Um, what next? If I'm going too fast, feel free to rewind and or do the slow down on the video. You can like change the speed, the playback speed. Next, 
we have my Raina shawl. Oh my gosh, I am quite proud of this shawl. This is a pattern by um, Nora Backlund. And oh my gosh. I mean, look at that lace. And this is like lace weight yarn. I don't know why I thought it was fingering weight. This yarn is so, so lightweight. So I'm very impressed with myself. Oh, hello. Look who didn't finish weaving in her ends. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> flip it around. <laughs> no one will have to know. Um, yeah, so it's just this beautiful lightweight shawl. And sadly enough, I haven't worn it, which is just so silly. But again, it's like I live in Minnesota and it's either super hot or super cold. We don't get a lot of that mid range. And so this is probably best for that. Um, but it is a super amazing pattern. It's free, it's easy, it's a great introduction to lace, I think. Um, I made this in Red Heart, it's a wrap yarn in the color Western Occidental. But I haven't really worn it, so that is a shame. I'm, I really don't want this to get like crazy wrinkly because then I really won't wear it. But I also don't wanna sit here and fold in front of you guys. You know, that's not very exciting. So that'll be the best it gets for now. Um, all right. After my Reina, or during, you know, the timeline's a little fuzzy. <laughs> but sometime <laughs> around then, I made my Spring Sorrel. And this is a pattern by Wool and Pine. Um, it's got these beautiful dip stitches on this yoke. I think it's a circular yoke. It's got short sleeves. It's cropped. It's got this nice, um, do they call this twisted rib? Broken rib? Twisted? Pretty sure you knit through the back loop. And it fits so well. It fits so well. It's so beautiful. It's cropped and thus I do not wear it that often which is a shame because it's gorgeous. Um, I made this with Knit Picks Swish DK, so it's really soft, and I made it in the color Amethyst Heather. Sometime after that, I made the Secret Summer Crop, which is by Jessie Made Design. This I made in fingering weight yarn. This is Knit Picks Stroll hand painted in the color Hummingbird. It's a little wrinkled. It's just a little crop tank top. I'm not sure how I feel about the fit. Um, I don't think it's very flattering on me, which is, I guess I can't figure out quite why. Like it's a mostly fitted tank top. It's just some, something about it sits funny on me. But I do really like the little, like the, technique for the straps. They're so squishy and round. <laughs> I don't know if that's double knitting um, or if that's an I-cord. I'm not really sure what to call that. And I really haven't worn this either. Hmm. Are we sensing a theme here? Because I am. <laughs> um, after that, I made my ranunculus and this was really like a stash bust project where I knew I wanted to try making a ranunculus and then I saw that you could make it with like very little yarn and I had these random skeins of this baby yarn. It's like, I think it's 100% polyester and it's super soft, um, but I only had one. It was a big skein. I think it was maybe a 200 gram skein, but this was it. And I remember I was like going down to the wire trying to make sure I had enough yarn to make the sleeves even. <laughs> but this is the ranunculus by Midori Hirose. It's a beautiful like textured pattern yoke. And then um, this one is nice and cropped. It's got these short sleeves that go just past my elbows. And I do like this and I think I've worn it maybe a handful of times. Again, it's cropped so like that does limit me. I can't wear it to work or anything. Um, but I like this pattern a lot and I actually am currently working on another ranunculus that's going to be longer long sleeves for more like practical wear and in slightly I think more 
nice sweater yarn. Um, slightly nicer. <laughs> Not 100% polyester from Michaels. That was meant for baby blankets. Um, but yes, so that is something. And this was, I think I said, loops and threads, baby rainbow in the color light aqua. After that, I made another shawl. You guys were with me for the saga of this shawl. This is the Touchstone by Fogbound Knits. Dun, 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 dun. It's so gigantic. And this I completed using some Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball um, in the color Feng Shui Gray. Yeah, and I've never worn it. It's so fuzzy, I really should. Maybe I have a trip coming up, maybe I'll bring it. Cause I feel like this could be good for that. But yeah, it's really fuzzy, nice neutral colored yarn. Um, and I don't know, it's nice, it's comfy, but I just haven't worn it. Um, yeah, so this is Touchstone by Fogbound Knits. It's a nice, it's got like garter, mostly garter and then some some lace sections as well. So it's very similar in that sense to the Reina, but just different shape and the lace is a little bit different. Um, then we get into more sweater territory. Man, my hair is crazy. I've been doing all this trying things on. And it's just like, I can feel the static building and my little baby hair is like streaming outwards from my head. <laughs> All right, this is my Felix cardigan, which I finished, I want to say sometime this fall. It's my first cardigan, knit cardigan, and it has buttons, which I'm really proud of. And um, I have worn this a couple times. The thing is that I haven't blocked it yet. I keep meaning to, and then I keep not doing it. And I don't know why, but I know it's going to look nicer once I block it. So maybe I'll try to do that today. Anyway, this is a very popular pattern. It's by Savory Knitting. Um, I did this in Knit Picks City Tweed in the color Orca, which was not the best choice for the pattern because it doesn't show off the beautiful like shoulder detail. Um, so I would recommend if you're gonna make this pattern or for myself if I ever make it again, to choose a more solid yarn or not a tweed based yarn so that you can really see that eyelid detail. Um, I do love it, and it is soft, and it is very warm. I also haven't taken any pictures of it. Oops. <laughs> I'll do that once it's blocked. Um, yeah, so that is that. This is probably, like, the warmest sweater I've made, and it's great for wearing to a very chilly office. After that, is this correct? Have I powered through most of it? So speedy. After that is my most recent finished object and the one I love the most. <laughs> I can't help it. I just love the sweater. This is the town sweater by Ozetta. It's my first drop shoulder sweater. First sweater with a bottom up construction. It's got this beautiful, whoops, hello, long ribbing on the sleeves and on the bottom. It's got a really nice like wide sleeve and I made them long enough so they sort of go part way up my hand. They're so cozy. This is a 100% wool yarn. It's the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes, which is the same thing that I made my very first sweater out of. Um, and this is in the color Mink Heather, which is just like a nice, nice neutral color, but it's still, it's heathered, so it's not like totally flat in color. And yeah, I just, I've been wearing this like nonstop at least once a week. I wore it on Christmas, I wore it on my birthday. It's like my like special most loved sweater. It's by Ozetta, highly recommend. She has some other really beautiful like wardrobe staple patterns, um, some new ones that have just come out. I do plan to make another one of her patterns in the new year sometime. I shouldn't say in the new year. By the time I make it, it won't be new anymore. 
Um, but I do also someday want to make another one of these. I'm thinking in like a dark green, like a foresty green. I think that would be really lovely. And I think I'd get a lot of wear out of it based on how much wear I've been getting out of that one. <laughs> I like live in it. Um, anyway, that is, oh, and then just to round things out around Christmas and the holidays, I made four dishcloths using Knit Picks Dishy, two in this and two in this. These are crocheted. These are my only crochet projects this year, which is crazy because I started as a crocheter. Um, so I should do more of that. But yeah, these are just the, I didn't write down the pattern, but they're like your basic folded pot holder. I'll make sure to link it down below. They're double thick and I like them a lot. And I gifted a couple of them and those two are still meant to be gifts. I just haven't seen those people in person yet. So that is my roundup of everything I made in 2022, probably unless I'm forgetting something. And I do have some takeaways. So my first takeaway is that I did not take my Ravelry documentation seriously and I would like to get better about that. I also don't really wear shawls and I don't really wear knit tops from what I can tell so far. So the things I get the most use out of are my like full length sweaters. And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind because if I can make things that I'm sure that I'll wear, oh, and socks, I do wear my socks. Um, I just, it's such a better feeling. And then I don't, I guess, and this isn't something hopefully everyone has, but I definitely get this where I'll make something and I'll be so proud of it and it'll be so beautiful. And then I'll feel guilty that it's like sitting in a drawer somewhere not getting used. So I'm gonna try to focus on things that make me happy and things that I wanna wear. That being said, sometimes there's a pattern that you just wanna make for the fun of it and I think that is totally fine. Like there is nothing wrong with doing something because it's fun and not caring about if the pro like the finished product is something that you want or need, that's fine. Like with my shawls, I actually have a ton of shawl yarn to get through. It's not gonna be tops. And you know, I don't wear that many shawls, but will I make them? Yeah, totally, probably. <laughs> I don't know, we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something about that, but maybe I won't. Um, so yeah, my goal is definitely to make more of what I'll wear. And I also have a goal to try to not feel the pressure to just like crank things out. Um, I think since I started a podcast, at first it was really like motivating to do that. And then I started feeling a little guilty when I wasn't like knitting as fast or making huge progress. But I hope that that's not what everyone is just here for. Like, I hope you're here to enjoy, enjoy the, the process, not just the like huge amounts of progress. Um, I know I enjoy sitting and chatting with you guys, so I hope you enjoy it too. And I'm just going to try to, yeah, do this in a way that's fun for everyone. <laughs> anyway, thank you for sitting down with me. I had so much fun. It's crazy to see how much knitting I did this year. We'll see what next year looks like. And, or I guess last year, and then we'll see what this year looks like. And yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful start to the new year and I hope you enjoy all of your crafting and I will see you next time. Have a great time and enjoy your projects. Bye.